Let's bring in Dr. Mohamed Munir. He is a virologist over at Lancaster University in the UK. Uh, Dr. Munir, good to have you on. Good to see you here on the News Hour. Um, you are an expert, sir, in the structure of viruses and how specifically they transmit. I am not. So if you could explain to us in layman's terms what we exactly know about the coronavirus. I'm specifically interested in finding out how the transmission rates of coronaviruses compared to, let's say, other diseases, let's say the common cold. Yes, so COVID-19 virus, it uh, have a transmission rate at least two times more than the influenza. So if someone is infected with influenza, it has a potential to transmit to uh, at least two people in the near vicinity. But the COVID-19 um, can be transmitted to two to three. So it's two times more than that, uh, more than the common flu. So that, that is actually not really uh, much of the concern. The concern is that with the COVID-19, majority of the people, they stay asymptomatic, like four out of five infected might not notice the disease. And they apparently seem healthy, but they are the ones that are gonna transmit the infection to uh, other people which might not notice them. So that is how the contagiousness of the COVID-19 has been so lavishly uh, appreciated and it has moved into our dimension in a very short time. So, but really the good news, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. I just wanted to add on to the fact that the overall uh, mortality rate is relatively high compared to the flu. For example, it is 30 times more than uh, the death we have seen with the influenza. So it has found sort of a balance between contagiousness, very high, highly contagious, but also lethal at the same time. Okay, so if I've understood you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, higher mortality rate than the common cold or common flu, uh, asymptomatic for a long period of time, which makes it more difficult, plus a higher transmiss transmissivity rate. So this complicates things. How do all these sort of help scientists like yourself in terms of um, finding treatments? Oh, precisely. So these are one of those uh, fundamental questions need to be answered before any vaccine or any therapeutics need to be developed. For example, once we come to know how the shape of the virus look like, we will be able to simulate different antiviral that can bind on to the cell surface itself, the virus surface itself, and can block its entry into our cells. And if it is blocked, that means the virus will not have a chance to uh, replicate into the body, and that is how antiviral works. For example, one of the antivirus that is getting green signal is chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, which is relatively less toxic sort of the same chloroquine. It is getting quite good signal from the FDA to be approved. That is the one that act at to entry stage of the virus. So once a virus enters into our body um, at a cellular level, at that point, it has to release this nucleic acid that will help the virus to make more copies of its own. This chloroquine stop at that uh, uh, stage of the virus application. Okay. So understanding how the viruses replicate, understanding how the structure look like, really help to shape the antiviral and the vaccines to develop. Okay, for me, here's my final Jeopardy question for you. Um, you have flus, and we all know that they mutate. So we have N1, H1, we have N1, H7. These are all sort of different mutations uh, of the same virus. And, and, and if you have a vaccine, it's generally not sort of very effective on sort of like the next strain. Uh, you, do you have any indication as to whether or not um, this virus uh, will mutate or can mutate? And obviously this is going to sort of complicate things down the road. Uh, yes, precisely. I, uh, one thing very clear uh, uh, to mention over here is that um, the viruses always mutate. That is how they replicate. So that is not exception to any virus, um, including COVID-19 causative agent. But the thing is that uh, uh, common flu, like influenza virus, that has a uh, genetic makeup is broken into eight pieces and those eight pieces are really making it very versatile, very mutating. But the COVID-19, the whole genome is only a single strand. So it's only a single script that is encoding different proteins. But just to make it clear for common understanding is that influenza virus mutate very lavishly. At least one spelling mistake comes in the life of one virus cycle completion. But in, when it comes to the coronaviruses, they, they do mutate, but the mutation rate is significantly lower than the coronavirus. So this means that if we have a vaccine against COVID-19 now, it's going to be staying effective for quite a long duration. So that is not a worry about at this moment. Dr. Minner, I do have to say after talking to you, I feel a lot smarter. Thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. All right, time to